Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 290. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 285 to 294. Hey, in this trick, we're going to follow up what we did in 289 where we used the len, len, and substitute function. A great trick to count semicolons or words or numbers. But here what we want to do is we have a column of data and our data came out a, a certain way uh, the elements separated by columns but we have not everything just in one cell but we have these columns and we need to get at the individual pieces that are separated by columns. Here it is for our count we want to ask for this cell right here find all the PCPs in this whole column and count them. We can see that there's one and two. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to do our len and substitute trick again. We'll ask for the total length of everything in the column and we'll subtract from it a length and then a substitute. Remember the substitute can say take this whole text string even if it's in a column with lots of individual elements even if they're separated by commas and find all the PCPs and substitute a blank in. So length will count the total length and then length substitute Sub subtracting out these PCPs will give us a smaller count. In this case it would give us six less than whatever the total is. When we subtract the two it will give us six, which means there's six characters, right? And then we can compare that to length of this, which is three, right? Six divided by three is two, and that will give us the count. All right, let's see if we can do this. Equals LEN, and we're going to have to count this whole range here. Now I'm going to have to ampersand, which is the join symbol, and then double quote, comma, double quote. That is because there's not, there's a, we're missing a comma at the end of each one of these. Close parentheses. Now I'm going to actually copy this because I'm going to have to use that again. And we're going to subtract, just like we saw in the last video, the length, the length of what? Well, this, the length of this has to be smaller. We need to substitute out those PCP. So I'm going to put substitute. And what's the old text? that right there. I'm going to hit comma and the old text is this. Now we need to put a comma on the end of this because this is not, we don't, right now it would count the PCP but if we had a PC it would also, uh, or a better example is the uh, N here. We have an N and an NP. So it, if we have similar elements it could double count or count extra ones that we don't want. So we have to do ampersand, double quote, comma, double quote. Actually, the first time I did this, I didn't do that, and I got the wrong count, and I put it in, and sure enough, it worked. Of course, thanks to Don Quixote. Now, that's the old text, comma. The new text is what? Double quote, double quote for blank. And then close parentheses on the substitute, close parentheses on the len. Now, let's just take a look at this. If I highlight this and hit my F9, whoop, I get an 18. Because if you count this first string, there's 18. This next one is 9. This next one is 11, right? Control Z. Now, let's see what it's going to subtract. I'm going to highlight this whole thing here and hit F9. Oh, there's that 14. So 18 minus 14 because we subtracted the PCP and a comma, right? So 18 minus 14 will give us um, 4, right? That's a 4 there. Whereas down here, whatever the count was, minus 7 will give us uh, another 4. Control Z. So what is that going to do? Well, when we put parentheses around this whole thing, uh, actually, let's just highlight the whole thing and see what we get when we hit uh, F9. Oh, there they are, the two fours. Well, that means, in essence, there's one, two counts. Control Z. What if we just divided by the LEN of this? But don't forget, ampersand, double quote, comma, double quote. Because now this will give us four. The top part will give us four plus four is eight. And eight divided by four is two. Now, this whole thing needs to be put inside of some product so that it can evaluate the arrays. If we control shift, uh, if we control enter right now, it gives us value. Even if we tried it as an array, it's like one. It's picking up the first element. So F2, and you got to put the sum product around. 
The sum product is a function that will handle arrays without having to use your control shift enter. All right, control enter, and then double click and send it down. Hopefully, I got the cell references right, and I didn't. You can see I um, that moved. So I'm going to escape, click up here. Oh, yeah, I forgot to lock these. So I'm going to hit F4, dollar sign in front of the row reference. And these ones are relative. All right, let's try this again. Double click and send it down. And sure enough, we got it right. By the way, if you took these uh, ampersand out, right, the N would have a problem here. And it would count 7 because it found an extra N right there, whereas what we really wanted here was just NP. So by putting that comma at the end, it avoids that problem. I'm going to Control Z. All right, uh, so that's a little bit about uh, more on the len and len substitute and just an ingenious uh, uh, way of, of counting when you're looking through a whole column and you've got to count these individual elements. All right, we'll see you next trick.